All right, how's it going everyone? Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about uh, mostly the base principles of the idea of sensation. Um, uh, we'll kind of open with, you know, what is the difference between sensation and perception, and then we'll talk about a lot of the fundamentals of sensation. So uh, sensation is how our bodies take in information. So this is just our five senses, our uh, sense of touch, hearing, sight, um, uh, uh, taste, uh, and whatever the other one is, I'm just forgetting, smell. And so this is how our body takes in the outside world and, you know, sees things, hears things, smells things, uh, touches things. And so that, that's what sensation is all about. Perception is how we interpret the things that we sense. Um, and our perception is dictated by our life. Um, what has happened to you? Um, what experiences have you had in life that influences how you understand or what you think about the things that happen in this world? Um, you know, the, 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 the phrase beauty is in the eye of the, of the beholder is a credit to this idea of perception. Anyone can see, everyone sees the same painting, everyone sees the same picture or uh, tastes the same food, but our background influences our appreciation or our understanding of that. If I took years of art school and had a good understanding of certain paint paintings, I might be able to better understand, okay, why is this you know, stroke of red on a gray background something that is beautiful and deep and intricate and has something to say about something? But for someone that has no idea about anything, I'm literally like, this guy got paid a million dollars to paint a red streak on a gray background. Like, where, where have I been all my life? Well, you know, why am I not doing that? Um, so it just really depends on um, how you see things and, you know, what your past experiences are influences the way that you, uh, you know, sense and understand the world. So we're going to stick with sensation for today. Perception will, will come in another video, but I do want to kind of clarify and differentiate those two things. So let's start at the beginning are thresholds. So the absolute threshold is the minimum uh, level of stimulus needed in order to sense something. The minimum level of stimulus needed in order to sense something, S-E-N-S-E. -S -E. So all this is saying is that there is a, a threshold, a minimum level needed in order for us to sense different things. So this is the faintest whisper or the light the dullest light in the distance or the softest touch of skin um, on our hands we have a limit on this and what you need to tack on the end of it is 50 percent of the time the minimum level of stimulus needed in order to uh, sense something 50 percent of the time and all that is showing us is if we have something that you know we're we're in a butterfly you know, the butterfly comes next to us and they bat their wings and we feel the brush of the, their wings on our skin. If we can sense that every time it flutters by, well then what's to say that if we move our hand farther away, that's, that it's, you know, we can still not feel that thing. So it has to be 50% of the time. So I keep my hand still, the butterfly is in that position, it's waving its wings, and if I can feel the, the light touch of its wings 50% of the time, that is your absolute threshold. Now, is this something that you're gonna ever really experience? Yeah, probably. Are you gonna notice it? No, probably not, because you'll be staring off at something and something will be in your absolute threshold, kind of in the corner of your eye, or you'll barely hear it, but it's it's not gonna be in, very important. This is just kind of like a baseline, but don't, don't be go don't go looking for your absolute threshold. It'll be very difficult to find. You need you need a science lab. So difference threshold is the same thing basically, but you're just comparing two different things. So it's the minimum level of stimulus needed in order to differentiate or notice two uh, you know the difference between two two things. Uh, so this could be a tonal change. Um, someone is uh, you know two people are singing. Uh, the same note, but one person is just slightly off, um, your ability to recognize that 50% of the time would be your difference threshold. Um, it could be the same thing for color. 
um, where a color is a, just a fraction of, of a bit darker and you being able to notice that difference 50% of the time, that would be your difference threshold. So piggybacking on the difference threshold, we have what is known as the Weber's Law. So Weber's Law is talking about the difference threshold and it's saying that when you are attempting to recognize the difference between two stimuli, there is a set percentage difference that will clue you in on, okay, there's a change here. So in this picture, you can see that the right side is just slightly lighter than the left side. And that is because it is at an 8% difference in color. It is 8% lighter which is the percentage needed in order to notice a light difference. Um, weight wise, so if you were holding on to uh, 100 similarly weighted objects, maybe 100 quarters, if you're holding on to 100 quarters, if I took one of those quarters off, you would recognize the change. If I took two quarters off, you might recognize it. Weight is 2%. Uh, tone is 0.3%. So there just has to be a 0.3% change in uh, in the tone of the sound in order for us to pick up that change. So all you really need to know, you don't need to know the specific numbers, but um, Weber's law is talking about, okay, there's a specific, if you want to pick up the difference, there's a specific percentage number that you will notice and or pick up. Okay, so that's Weber's law. So now we need to talk about sensory adaptation. Um, so Sensory adaptation is an aspect, uh, you could call it like aspect of gestalt psychology. It is a method of the brain to help us make sense of so of all of the incredible amount of stimuli that we are bombarded with on a daily basis, okay? So when you step into a room uh, of your house, you, you come out of your room and you smell um, your parents cooking. It smells really good. So you decide to go downstairs to do your homework or talk to your parents while they cook. The smell was really strong when you first walked out, but after 15 to 20 minutes of hanging out downstairs, what you'll notice is that you, you don't really smell the food anymore. When you turn on a fan, the first time you turn it on, you don't really, you, you feel the, the fan, but after about 10, 15 minutes, you don't feel it anymore. When you put on clothes, when I put on this jacket, I felt it the first time I really put, put it on and felt the weight on the shoulders and feeling it on my arms. But after a period of time, I don't feel that anymore. That's sensory adaptation. Your body, your brain, excuse me, your brain basically turns off some of our sens sensories. After they've recognized specific things, your brain stops paying attention to them. They're just like, okay, cool. Like you just stay over there. It's not that I can't smell this thing but you stay over there. I'm going to focus on whatever it is I'm focusing on. I'm going to continue doing my homework. I'm going to continue my conversation. And so those things just kind of get played off into the background. And the reason why this is so important is because just imagine if you constantly every single day felt this on your body, felt the clamp of your shoes, the press of your glasses on your face. Um, you know, we just wouldn't be able to focus on anything because there would just be too much going on. And so it would just be very difficult to focus. So sensory adaptation allows us to focus in on the things that are important. So um, we're gonna move, we've already in a video, I talked about your sense of sight and your sense of hearing. So here I'm gonna talk about the other less lesser senses. Um, so let's simply just talk about a uh, sense of touch and keep things simple. Um, when we are talking about your um, receptor cells, for touch, pressure is the only receptor cell that you have, okay? So when you feel pressure, those are the, uh, the only type of receptor cells. They're basically scales and they measure how much is being pushed onto the skin. Um, temperature, there's no specific receptor cells for those. Pain, pain, same thing, no specific receptor cells. When you cut yourself, the cut area is not sending information up to the brain to tell you that you're in pain, it's sending other information. But your brain, pain is a, is a function of the brain. It is a tool or a uh, signal your brain sends to the rest of your body. And it is a signal that says, hey, this is something, there's something wrong here. You need to stop what you're doing and you need to check to make sure that it's not you know, going to kill you. Um, so you hurt your leg and your brain is gonna say, 
okay, this is a lot of pain. I'm going to send a lot of pain because this is really bad and you need to not, you know, you need to not move. You need to go get help or something like that. Um, so pain is a method are a system of the brain that helps us, you know, basically stay alive. So there's this theory known as the gate control theory. And basically what this says, and it deals with pain, is that you have the ability to turn on and off your pain button, the pain channel. Um, and so when pain is being, pain signals are being sent from the brain down to the different parts of the body, you can turn that off. And the way that you are able to turn that off is because uh, if you find something else that is more important, athletes will see this all the time, they'll hurt themselves and they'll pay, play through the pain um, because their brain has found something that is more important, like, you know, getting the you know winning goal or whatever it is sports people do um, and so um, they're gonna they're going to push through and not really feel the pain generally they'll feel the pain afterwards but if you've got focused and you've got something else that you need to do very often you'll be able to uh, ignore the pain while uh, while you're doing whatever activity you're doing so next we have taste uh, so taste is our next um, uh, 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 sense and so all we're looking at here is we have five different uh, taste receptors we have sweet sour salty bitter and umami um, just easy thing to remember just try to keep them keep them all in your brain um, but the thing you do need to react to in the uh, sensory inter our sensory interaction just note that your different senses play along with each other and they help influence what you are um what you're seeing and hearing and stuff like that so a uh, major one of sensory interaction is your sense of smell with your sense of taste if you've ever been sick while uh and then eaten while you are sick just doesn't really taste all that good especially if your nose is all clogged up and you can't smell anything it tastes very bland your sense of taste is heavily influenced by your sense of smell so speaking of smell, um, once again, keep this pretty simple. All that's happening here is that little particles of whatever it is that you're smelling. So if you're you know, smelling a rose, little particles of, go, are, of that are going up into your nasal passage. They are attaching, attaching themselves to the receptor cells uh, that are at the uh, top of the nasal passage, little hair cells. Those hair cells are going to the olfactory nerve, which is getting sent to the olfactory bulb, and it's processing the things that you smell. Oh, this is a flower or a rose, or oh, this is, you know, whatever food it is that we're eating. One thing to note that it is very small, um, our olfactory bulb, and uh, one of the aspects of it being really small, and some of the thing, something you can compare it to is you think about dogs, is, or, you know, just other humans. Like, look at the, uh, look at the areas that are controlling um, you know, touch and sight and hearing versus the olfactory bulb, which is really, really small. All that's telling you, we don't really re rely on our sense of smell. It's not that important to us. Um, it's probably the least important of our senses in, you know, kind of the day-to-day, day-to-day uh, -day life. So last uh, but not least, we have uh, body position and movement. So our sense of kinesthesis and vestibular sense. So kinesthesis basically tells us our, where are our limbs. If you closed your eyes, you would know where your limbs were. Um, and basically this doesn't seem all that important until you turn it off. If you didn't have kinesthesis, you wouldn't be able to do anything without looking at the specific body part. If you wanted to pick up a water bottle, if you wanted to walk, you would have to watch those things. There's a gentleman by the name of Ian Waterman who had that happen to him where he um, lost his vestibular sense and um, he just couldn't, um, he couldn't do anything unless he was looking at his limbs. Uh, if the lights went out, he would just fall to the ground. Um, when he wasn't looking at his body, it wouldn't really do anything. Um, you know, like the rest of us, we kind of shift around and move our hands. If he wasn't looking at his hands while he talked, it would just lay down at his side. So, um, interesting thought, like it's kind of weird, like, but seeing what it, ha what happens when you don't have it tells you how important it is. So. The vestibular sense is basically just our sense of balance and where our body 
body position is. So kinesthesis is limbs, vestibular sense is our balance of where our body position is. Uh, vestibular sense is going to keep you, um, uh, you know, if it gets sloshed around, um, it's, it's, it's up in the ears, your, sense, your vestibular sense, and it's in the sacs above your cochlea. And um, if you get spun around or if you get an ear infection, people get really like people can get really dizzy or they can feel really nauseous if, the, if some of those things happen. So uh, that is uh, sensation. And uh, thanks for listening in. Y'all have a great day.